Good night, good evening. What do you prefer? Do I conduct the panel from here or from there? I feel like you're, yeah, from there? Okay, let's go. And also we have a special guest, which is Mihai from Project ARC, um, which we work with very closely now, from Colectivo, also involved in NFT right. creation. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Colectivo Festival. Um, I hope everyone is having a good time, yes? Yeah, all right, awesome. And did everyone check out the NFT exhibition already? No. It's time. It's time. All right, so this section is going to be basically about NFTs. Who has heard, I guess before I go to asking the panelists, who has heard about NFTs here before? Okay, 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 okay. That's a, that's a decent amount. Um, so as I said, I'm Nico da Costa Gomez. I work for Colectivo, um, and I do some other stuff on the side. Um, one of them being very interested into the whole NFT marketplace and what they're building here. So hence why I am here kind of like leading this panel. Um, and as you see here, we have a lot of people that are building within the NFT space. When people hear NFTs, they hear um, a lot of things of like, hey, don't go in there, don't do that. But these are all people that have built or are building within NFT space, and I think it's quite relevant to showcase that NFT is not just a hype, we're actually building in it, and there are real people building in this space. So, without further ado, this is gonna be a 20 minute panel conversation, then we can open up the floor for some Q&A for whoever has any questions or anything that's not so clear yet. Um, but let's start. So, hi everyone. If you would have to explain to me what an NFT is, what would it be? Um, I can take that one. So, um, I'm, I'm, you're probably going to download it. How many of you have downloaded the uh, wallet from the, from, from, from the guys, from, from Z guys and Collectivo? So, um, basically, as um, uh, one of the previous speakers, uh, Dirk, said, it's a digital asset. What, the, what is an asset? Um, an asset, it's um, a valuable, right? It's something that um, it, it takes its own um, value. Um, it's digital, so basically it's, it exists on the blockchain, and um, it has the portion of the ownership. The difference between um, a coin, which is, um, in, in our case, a lot of the currencies that are out there, uh, the digital uh, croissant currency, the uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all the others, those are coins. And then NFTs, they can be seen as, they represent a lot of um, visuals, right? That's the sort of main difference between the two. And I want you to think more simply as, um, you can think of NFTs in the real world in your life uh, just by taking a plane ticket, um, right? The plane ticket, it's, uh, most of the times digital, you have it in physical as well. Um, the actual place that you have is different from the one next to you. Um, it costs money, and it's not necessarily possible, but you could resell it uh, before the flight actually takes place. The only difference is that the flight, once it happens, the ticket doesn't have any more value. Um, and I think the biggest misconception here is that it's just about art. I think that's because uh, that's what you see in the media. There's a lot of other use cases, and I hope we get to dive into that, um, and um, such as tickets um, for events. Actually, one of the uh, conferences that happened in Barcelona was, was using this. Um, you can see NFTs as a membership, so people that believe in an idea, like Aku's story, people identify themselves with the, uh, with the concept because they believe in something, so everybody has that ownership, and they can say, hey, I believe in that. I have uh, an NFT, and then the person next to you uh, has the same NFT, so you have, uh, you have this in common. Um, right. I hope I covered it. So, that was, that was, that was complicated. Sí, that was complicated. Sí, so, sí, sí, sí. How, so, tell me, QD, sí. if you would have to simplify it, let's say I'm a five-year-old, six-year-old kid, what is an NFT? Okay, I'm going to buy an NFT, and I'm going to NFT basically the non-fungible token. Isso é que é mesmo que eu vou não vou trazer um copy de gente. Está um só de gente. Então, se você tem um token, se você tem um cat snake, o cat snake aqui está, esse aí só de gente. Nós não podemos duplicar a blockchain, 
Nos turpo mira su historia, un de la bai, un que ya pasa con él, es no por fake. Entonces, un ene no por me engañar, porque es también en Nike. Un solo de Nike. Entonces, basically, no por cambiar nada en Nike. Pero por traer, ese es otro tema, entonces, por destruir, pero no por cambiar nada en Nike. Entonces, basically, es eso. We've seen in the past two years artists like Mike Beeple um, sell his art piece called Every Days for approximately $69.3 million. I don't know about you guys, but $69 million, that's like a whole lot of boats. I can buy a lot of boats for $69 million. So then here's another guy that sells a picture for $69 million. So the question here is, Right now, there's an NFT in our gallery right now that is worth at its peak $400,000. What makes NFTs valuable? <laughs> so everyone's like, hey, come, give it to Dirk. He knows. Well, I mean, like, value is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. And that's been true for NFTs. That's the whole idea of, a, of an economy. So it, it's psychology. It's, uh, and it's very hard to give a like, mathematical or uh, empirical uh, answer to that question. Do I think Beeple was a bit overpriced? I do. And if you read about the story and the guy that actually, the bidding war that happened, uh, will, you know, the future, will it turn out that 30 million w would have been a better price? Maybe. Um, still a lot of boats. Still a lot of boats. But what makes it so valuable, and I think this goes back to regular art, um, art becomes very valuable. If, 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 uh, if the latest Van Gogh is sold, and you see who bought it, then it's probably some Japanese uh, uh, firm that is really buying it not for the art, but as an investment, and, and, and buying it because it's a solid investment, because Van Gogh has a, a fix, is a fixture in art history. It, it's part of, uh, of art history, and that will never change. Um, and I think the same with Beeple. Beeple is part of art history. Beeple is the guy that made NFT's headlines. Uh, and, 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 and is the guy that made everybody know about NFTs. And, and I think a big part of the value comes from that. That's not very tangible, but that's psychology. So you've been speaking here about Van Gogh, which is like one of the biggest artists of creation, like of our whole lifetime or even like existence of humankind, one of the biggest names. But now we're coming into this age of digital art where an animation, as you might have seen in the NFT gallery, is also an art piece. So what is this difference between traditional art? Because art is used as a store of wealth and also an expression of identity. So what is the difference then between traditional art and this type of modern art? I think for traditional art, people really love something that is physical. People love something that is real, that, that you can touch, you can smell. On a Van Gogh painting, you can see the paint. Uh, um, but for me, being a digital artist, uh, yeah, like years ago, I spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on digital assets before NFTs. I'm talking about uh, digital trees that I used when I was doing architectural visualization, uh, uh, buying texture packs. Uh, these were all already like digital assets that were not uh, physical, and, but they had great value for me because I, if I bought a, a, a tree pack like that, I could make better images and I could work less hours and, 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 and make a higher quality project. So, so I think that the difference between what's physical and what's digital, um, it's, it's changing. So it's hard to give a, a concise answer. So I know that people that are really deep in NFT don't really like only associating NFT with art. And um, at Collectivo, we use NFTs as geo-NFTs. So basically, you have to imagine um, an NFT is a picture that represents uh, underlying data or metadata. In our case, it's like a satellite imaging of on top, which represents a land and the metadata of the land, which is basically the soil content and um, water content, um, density, biodiversity, stuff like that. So besides art, what are other use cases for NFTs? OK, well, you're looking at me, so I'm going to answer. Go ahead. I mean, you've been silent for a while, so. <laughs> um, well, in my case, as a partly as a fashion designer, it's one of the things that I do. Um, what we've used them for, obviously, is to build community and uh, develop more onboarding into the Web3 space, help people to understand the value of 
the Web3 space for a wider population. Once you understand a little bit more the, the entry point, then it's easier to see how does this work for me. And in our community, it has been access to events. We don't know, we think we're one of the first NFT ticketed events in Trinidad, which was through my, West, my Wildflower brand. Um, and those tickets have then led to more and more access and hopefully more and more and more access. And I think building a way that people can sort of be identified as being loyal to, in our case, an actual brand and um, have shared values around how that brand is developed is the way that we've seen NFTs work beautifully. Because even though we have NFTs in the gallery in, right now, they were as much as they are, I think, beautiful, um, they really have so much more value when you buy into the whole value chain of why you like Wildflower, why you like the people who are part of this community, why you want to show up at the events, why you want to, you know, it, it just, it's, it's an entry point. So for us, it has been that. Awesome. I mean, speaking of Adidas has released NFTs, Nike has released NFTs, Starbucks has released a whole loyalty program based on NFTs. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of utilities in different other markets. And um, I think a big uh, ecosystem that's rising, it's the gaming industry as well, that's taking the NFTs to a next level. Um, basically, if you would play originally a game, um, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, or whatnot, you would get uh, money that would just be digital or items that would just stay there without being able to monetize that outside of the game. With, uh, the, advent of, with, the, with the rise of blockchain and NFTs, you can now monetize that, and there's been uh, a rise in the, in the crypto games such as Axie Infinity. Um, so, for instance, people in the Philippines, they've been playing this game and they've been playing it so, so much that at some point uh, they could buy houses with the, with the money they made from the game. Um, and one, one other interesting aspect is um, the um, um, run to earn. Mm. Um, it's been developed by uh, some guys uh, from Stepin. And basically, you have this digital sneaker that you put on your phone. And very similar to how you track your running, uh, you can now track your running and also earning. And you would be so amazed on how small groups on Telegram or, or Discord, they would just try to strategize how they can run more so they can make more money. Or they can just do, you know, um, I run a bit and then you run a bit. And just uh, it was a huge hype happening. Yeah. So I, yeah. I do remember that. The Solana blockchain, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, when you hear NFTs, you hear a lot of like, it almost like correlates a lot with crypto stock market, um, a lot of like Silicon Valley talks and stuff like that. Um, but you just mentioned something quite interesting, which is um, Axie Infinity being like a major push within the Philippines market for people to just play. People were actually making their salary by playing a game, which is a blockchain game based on NFTs. So my question here is very simple. Um, Curacao as a local economy is very easy now with a phone, we can connect to global markets. How does something like NFT change the dimensions of competition within an island like this towards outside global markets? And I think actually, QD, you might be the perfect person to ask this. Um, um, o projeto de NFT to usa é parte de casino, online gambling. Um, Corsol de país mais grande no mundo que dá uma licença de online gambling. Então, a maioria crypto projects of NFT projects to usa Curacao license. Então, se você quer é parte de Curacao license de casino, então, um caminho que é que nós por usa para pôr no Corsol de uma competência open, mas a pessoa não está em que é top cava. Então, nós podemos mesmo uma posição que é bom no mundo de cripto, no mundo de NFT. Se o governo, a pessoa não quer o governo, não está o que está passando. Que parte aí. I mean, pick pieces of the juice não agora, hein? Correto. Maybe you heard a few things. The stake, por exemplo, stake.com, que é um website mais grande de cripto, está em que escreve aqui, bom, nós estamos falando de 5 bilhões para a ANA. E sei que é bom se corçou por aí, diz um por cento de juros aí, de que era nós para encaixar em bom nossa economia, então nós estou bem bom para ter é parte de tecnologia. Nice, awesome, guys, it's not over yet, uh, but yeah, that's um, actually makes a lot of sense. I think um, Curacao should really explore this, especially looking that, seeing that we have 
so many legislation that allows for these types of industries to grow. We should really foster these types of growth. Um, I think we're still quite ahead of the game if we start now, but if we take too long to make decisions, before you know it, Bahamas, Barbados, they're all gonna cut right in front. So, um, of course, with much love to Trinidad and Tobago and Bahamas, but this is my island, I gotta represent, you know, sorry about that. Yeah, it's all one love, but it's all also competition. <laughs> um, so, the next thing that... How are you, Bombini. Bombini back. Um, so, basically, my next question is about the metaverse, right? Like, we've heard so much about the metaverse, it's such a hype, whatever. Um, Travis Scott organized a metaverse concert with approximately 28 million people. Can you imagine? a concert with 28 million people just jumping around and partying to his, his songs while he's performing. Facebook changed their name from Facebook to Meta. Like that's a big, that's a billion dollar company saying like, hey, I wanna call myself Meta. What is the reason they're for? So something that once was once a fantasy is now receiving real world discussion and actually consideration. So my question is, is the metaverse real? Or what do you think? I mean, the metaverse is very real. Uh, long before um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg kind of put it in everybody's head uh, by changing uh, his company's name to Meta, uh, I was actually doing things like uh, giving uh, virtual master classes to, uh, uh, for example, like a university in Zurich where they were doing spatial design. Uh, and I was like in VR with uh, 20 students, uh, real life, uh, creating and jamming on stuff and, and talking about spatial design stuff. So when you're talking about what the metaverse means uh, uh, to me, that's what the metaverse is. Um, that's not a super profitable uh, version of it, um, but that has much more to do with, with creativity. If you look at uh, the, all the money that's being poured into the metaverse right now, then you can ask the question, is it overhyped? I think it's overhyped in the same way that the internet was in the beginning. A lot of people poured a lot of money into the internet, but not really understanding what made the technology so strong. So there is a huge bubble, and it's going to deflate for sure, but there's an underlying current that, that is slowly going up. Uh, I, I would even say the bubble has deflated quite a lot. Well, recently, we've been huh? in the bear market <laughs> for a long time, and I, but I'm trying not to uh, look uh, at think the price. About it. No. Don't look at the price. Don't look at the price. Awesome. Anyone else has anything to yeah, say? Yeah, I'll just this? add. So we did Wildflowers in the first, very first Metaverse Fashion Week, which was in Decentraland in March. And, um, you know, there's, there's nothing that can replace physical experiences. And uh, of course, with clothes, nothing can replace physical clothes. But I think when you do consider it really enough to engage, and of course, the lack of interoperability is a problem. But um, when it becomes more and more accessible, and you think of it as an, a, a, a sort of a complement to real life, you know, that you're not trying to replace anything, but you are trying to expand on immersive experiences. When we think about Trinidad Carnival, for instance, and things that we're thinking about already, how can you experience even more of a global um, festival because of the addition of the metaverse and not trying to exchange one for the other? So I think whether or not it's real is not the question. Uh, obviously it is. <laughs> um, whether or not it adds value and how you create that value for your communities and how you really engage and how does this really expand on, on your brand, on your, on your service, on your, you know. I think um, I'm very lucky to be consulting for a company in Trinidad that, well, it's a global um, a regional company that has a lot of reach and the opportunity to have enterprise solutions for corporations in the metaverse and how that expands B2B business, B2B activities. I mean, there just there's so many more um, opportunities because of the accessibility that the metaverse can provide. So awesome. I think that's the value. Awesome. Pop, pop, pop. I just wanna mention uh, one thing. Um, we need to look at technology. Right, so right now there are two elements that stand in the way of mainstream uh, adoption. One, it's the VR glasses. Not everybody can afford those. Uh, they still give some headaches if you use them too much for some kind of experiences, but the, the next iterations will probably make them more accessible, similar to how the smartphone was something that not a lot of people had at the beginning, and now everybody has uh, at least a, a, a version of it. And the second is, um, if, you, if you look back two years ago, um, nobody knew what NFT marketplaces were. Uh, there was just a couple, maybe two or three of them, 
with OpenSea being the biggest one. And then overnight in six months, you would see like 50, 100, 200 of these um, NFT marketplaces, which uh, was the next big thing. And people were always trying to look what is the next big thing. So they looked at the metaverses. We have some of them working. There are uh, around five of them, uh, big ones. But um, in, in this case, you can't build a metaverse like you would build the marketplace. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of resources. Um, and also the resources that it requires for you to run the metaverse on your computer, that's uh, a lot of, um, um, that's another impediment. But if you look in the future, um, uh, we'll definitely be able to have Zoom calls in the metaverse just with our avatars without having to go to conferences and spending a lot of money on the flight tickets. Um, it's just a matter of believing in it that someday it will improve, and it's just a matter of uh, uh, developing those technologies to enable it for uh, mainstream adoption. Awesome. So I just want to add on to what you're saying. I like the whole concept of the metaverse. I think it's a bit too far-fetched at this moment. I do really believe in AR and the sense of augmented reality in which like, you're, you're not living into a metaverse, but your life becomes an augmented metaverse reality. Almost like if you're in your car, it can give you like signs of or pop-ups that it's like, hey, a car is coming or your messages is coming in. Almost like when you can almost walk in your house and your weather is almost in your eyes in a sense. We're not there yet, but I think in the next five to ten years, hopefully, we will get much closer to augmented reality. And I think augmented, re augmented reality is different from virtual reality. Virtual reality is when you are sitting in a space, you put on your glasses and you go into the space. Augmented reality is you're still in reality, but you're augmenting what's around you. So through like VR, through goggles or stuff like this, I think that would be our first act, like really um, major step towards adoption of these types of um, industries. So I have one last question, and it really is about this whole panel. NFTs, is it a hype or is it gonna stay? I think everyone here wants, to, wants it to stay, but <laughs> of course. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll repeat what I just said about the metaverse. Yeah. I mean, things get overhyped because it's interesting and everybody gathers around and it, it, it blows up. There's a lot of hot air and it has to deflate. And actually, that's, that's very good. You need a forest fire every now and then. So the stuff that really works stays there. Uh, but the technology underlying it, it works. And we've heard some great examples uh, here today. And, and people that know their stuff, are much smarter than me, they... They understand that uh, it's, it's, it's a good investment, but, but still, you don't just pour your money in and look at the companies that are doing the interesting thing. So I do want to touch that real quick because I think there are a lot of people here who heard about NFTs today. just want to say, do not go home and go buy <laughs> NFTs. That's not what we're telling <laughs> you right now. Research. So I have one last question, actually. I, I, I mean, do buy Dirk's NFT and everyone else that you saw into the gallery. But um, so... One thing that has been a big problem with NFTs is the amount of rug pulls. And I would like to address that before we leave. Can you explain to the crowd, what is a rug pull and what is the best way to avoid a rug pull? There we go. Well, okay. Rug pull, the man, but 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 the man, Nanda bendele, and ora nanda kayo bende, nanda bando na proyecto. Dus eri apoteke de kwe NFT eno ti yung balor. Um, pa kondesta o pregunta, eta difícil pa parese. Di kon, hende gusta ko, hende gusta sembra si ko ilegal. Flor, nang gusta tipo di flor. Se, pero nang gusta si ko ilegal. Dus eta difícil pa bo por stop un hende di asi un rock pool. Anto, um, e pressão da meti enviar um, um founder que traz o projeto e tu um pressão que tu ainda disse ei banco que ora me presta subir me que me que bem de qualquer preço então e pressão então a meti enviar atrás e o founder que e não por manter mais então é de abandonar o projeto então é de então tu enviar tá para mal o anda se é, pero é de difícil para evitar esse aí um, de mundo já vendi aqui dope thank you very much so those were my questions is there anyone in the crowd that has some questions? You have one question? You can have one too. Go ahead. 
Good evening. So I have an old computer. I have an old laptop. <laughs> I'm at the point to go buy me a new one. Mm. Tell them. So what are the requirements for my new laptop? To, to be able to handle an NFT transaction, is that? So that's a, fun that's a fun fact about NFTs. You can do it with your old laptop too, most probably. Okay. So you don't phone. have to buy a new laptop, I think. Anya, you want to add something no, to that? No, just saying on your phone sometimes. And your phone, yeah. If you have a phone, you're definitely, you can buy one right now. Actually. But if you're creating, then, then you that's might, a yeah. different story. But okay, so depends. if I'm creating, what do I need? It think also depends on we'll what you're creating. Look at creators? <laughs> I think it's not necessarily about the computer requirements, but the good internet connection. Because, no. yeah. Uh, but any how much up speed, how much download? 500, 1,000? A stable connection would get you anywhere, and a computer that you can buy from the store, regardless of its requirements, even the uh, cheapest one will, will, will get your job done. So it's not about the, 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 the hardware itself. It's just about the technicalities behind understanding the process, um, go and read the documentation and all that, and probably getting help from other people as well. So it's not about the laptop itself. Okay. Thank you very much. So are there any other questions? Oh, there we go. Um, how did NFT actually get, got started? And where do you see it evolving after this? Where do you see it going? Well, I mean, I might not be the best person to answer this question, but basically, first you had cryptocurrency. The first cryptocurrency that I know of was Bitcoin, but Bitcoin was kind of dumb. So then came Ethereum, a different kind of cryptocurrency, which was a little smarter. You could actually call it programmable money. So it's not just virtual money, but you could tell this money to do something. So you and me could have a contract. Uh, without a bank or any intermediary uh, uh, involved, uh, we could have this uh, a transaction between you and me. That transaction could also involve art. It could even involve a piece of art that changes colors whenever it's your birthday. Whatever, you know, it could be, uh, so it could do something, it, you can have some programming uh, on top of it. Um, to the, my best understanding, that's basically when NFTs became uh, possible, but if anybody has a uh, better Sam, the care a manera mas cum de mira NFT the being ta membresia this pabudren dun fiesta pabuza calque un producto dor cu NFT bo no bo copie eta unico un no bo duplicate eta po ne cum ibuza NFT a pa bambisa colectivo bo me se te NFT de bo telefon pa bo trenta dos mi no po cu e mande po un otro ende eta enta bai eta De mi wallet ta dus pa membresia ta abo so potine dus am de mi rele et e po bor usa pa universidad nang se bot ba un universidad po ba un tipo de les um bot ba un gym bot ba un fiesta um whatever dus e parte na im de gere nft de beta op importante de development di 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 teknologia i i acceso pa ende na na diferente cos nang ku da difícil pa bo controla ta kem po ti acceso na ji the NFT is the only one who has the SA. I know, but how did it evolve? I mean, it just didn't come out of thin So let's think of it this way. Um, let's think of money as a PDF, as a document, right? And it, in the PDF, you only have writing. You can't add images. It doesn't allow you. That was the limitations that the blockchain uh, would be at the beginning. Um, with the advent of a new standard, which is called DRC721, uh, imagine that as uh, allowing you to transfer JPEGs and create JPEGs. So now you have a whole new set of things that you can create in terms of images, arts, tickets, and so on. So that was the sort of turning point on the blockchain system that allowed for NFTs to come to fruition and to unleash this creativity that brought the NFTs. Um, on the question of what's coming, um, and I'm not sure if it has been mentioned before, um, there's a new category of NFTs that are called soul-bound NFTs. 
Um, the soulbound NFTs, um, y you wanna add something? Or? So, yeah, soulbound tokens, NFTs, yeah. But uh, I think those are like one of the most interesting um, concepts that are coming up actually right now. And it's quite cutting edge in a sense of how it delegates um, involvement within the community and also what they have achieved in the community. Imagine before built Colectivo, right? Um, imagine that we want to allocate free tickets for the next five years to people that have shared on social media, have um, brought five people to Colectivo and have gone to all our vendors or five of our vendors and pinned there. We can then group that all together and then give those people a soulbound token that they only can do. They cannot transfer it anymore. They cannot get that token and say like, hey, I'm going to give it to my neighbor. They will keep that as theirs. They cannot move it anymore. But what that allows us to do is to see which of our members of our community are the most engaged or actually involved within our community. Because only we can issue that as, as, a, as a basic community towards those people. And that opens up a whole new way of building loyalty programs or building um, these types of community protocols. And I think soulbound tokens are really interesting to see. Sim, they get a for build mas they get a para riba e parte di bonopo fake. The one for build the main number artista su number. That you artista ku a post um um board ape. Board ape ta um jamakaku nangu was amira the and the galeria nanda bal entre do shem pa treshe mil. Ela post riba su Instagram ku eti um board ape. Pero um artista local. Ela post e kuture dato nangu nos por amira. Lo que te pasa es NFT está no estuvo aquí por subir y mira un NFT que va a otra quien atrae que tiene la otra tú reconoces entonces ahora va a subir mira va a mirar que NFT que no te da real entonces él ha puesto algo después él ha deleted me quiero venir a decir hey yo me quiero saber tú deleted qué iba a ser no supo mira entonces es parte es de NFT me quiero de parte más esencial un otro parte está está vinci por ejemplo la tramonaliza of un arte Antes, ela vendia para mil dólares. Ou ela vendia Nico e para mil dólares. Nico, tu me vende Juni para um milhão. Da vinte não é nada fez um milhão aí. Agora que o NFT tem a coisa é da pone, que o da vinte tu ganha dez por cento cada venda. Então, o que dá passa é artista, é decidir escapa tu artista, que foi para você não seguir bem para arte trinta, sessenta milhões por ano, vi para ela vender sessenta milhões, ela é sute dez por cento de royalty. Uma vez também vendeu 120 milhões, e tem esses 2 milhões de royalty. Então, a parte é a única parte mais cardinal de NFT. É a ajuda, é a proteger os criadores com os artistas. Plus, é a ajuda a mirar o que está real e o que não está real. Então, se você me quer ter um bom uso, você não está sabendo que eu vou comprar um taço de Prada, um taço de Gucci fake, um Nike fake. Porque o NFT é um fake. Então, agora que não começa a marcar a casa, tem casa que não está marcando o NFT. Então, se você me vender a casa, você tem a casa, E NFT di e case. Jadi saya itu bo, saya yang nombor fake, tak boleh ni. Minta kerja tambah al. Unique, yang nombor kambi, yang nombor trenta deng, yang nombor si nada. So minta kerja algo pada tahun ni bersih tak minta imaginabu un Gucci bag atau un Louis Vuitton bag, kuting su prop su intellectual property rights embedded dengen. Kemudian bo misi guna bo wake, bo bo immediately wake su line of tracing unda la original. And the su authenticidad que esta parte de Gucci su producción, of the production de tal y tal año. No sé algo bueno pasa, ahora que me dice, me puedo tener, me puedo tener Rolex fake no me man, pero es por tal real también, pero it's a much faster, efficient way of verifying um, origin of um, these types of things. Um, so yeah, is there any other questions? Oh wow, nice, nice. All right. You can probably not hack it now. Hello, hello. Maybe there's a there's one question here first. Yeah, go. Good evening. Um, I have so many questions, but I really appreciate what QD said, and I want to answer. I want to kind of focus on that because you talked about royalties and how it's um, encoded into the smart contract. Um, that's actually changing. It's not. It's not true. And as a creator myself, yeah, it's a, it's a big debate on Twitter right now. Yes. Um, there are marketplaces that literally do not even um, give the creators any royalties. And Pseudo -swap. You know, huh? Pseudo -swap. 
X2, yeah, Y2 well, is yeah, one of them. Yeah. yeah, there's a bunch. And it's really hitting the creative, creator community, PFP communities, all these communities really hard. Um, because you live off of the royalties, you know, you make that mint and you get the mint money, but then you want to get the secondaries and you want to live off of that. But now there's like this whole uh, movement of traders who basically have loyal to two marketplaces that don't pay creators their royalty fees. So um, how do you see creative sovereignty? Like how is that value, is it gonna carry on in Web3? And um, for Aku, I guess for Direct Directly, how does that affect you? How, how are you guys um, gonna counteract that? And Okay, but when you it's a bad thing. It's un debate thing. Twitter a bad thing. It's 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 a bad thing. Pero en P2P te mag, pero si un marketplace nang asie, e NFT de waru di blur, of de waru di flag. Kita pasa, eri bono po anya, nada di e membresia, bono po login kubo NFT, tan stem bono paga e royalties. Dus, se ito un party, en gele kut atrobe dun debate, baso yan de bisa, pero balogra waki, mi si toke meita data di e NFT, en to cambia algo. Pero, nan tingo asie pa protege, e, e, paso gente te busca sempre una manera. Dus awagi kita nanti siapa nanti nanti basic datang ye af kumisan tu riba Solana chain nanti basic datang siapa leku Magic Eden. Ela tera umah ni raka abah ku tapi blur NFT ke me esung ku bayi kumprele tapi ro algo di blur. Dus esa eri ku ekos ini apa ke creator yo IOT. Meta Plex tapi basic ku umah ni raku eno tapi blur eh, pero bono pulak ini di Discord af bono pulak stake bo NFT. Dus tan stemo no paga e royalty ku ting riba NFT. Do so iso ta kos nan ku mestera pasa awagi pa nan po tackle ese. Anto un maneri ba lu solana un je project grande nan abisa pa malu eta bai si da digots eta bai stop di cobra royalties ki da pasa si e project ma grande ese koi tu project ci ki ta metu ngo si na da sinti e dolo and now you're going to do it, but you're going to do it with the same thing. So you're going to be a change. So you're going to be able to accelerate the change here, and you're going to be able to do it with the same thing. It's a way, as I said, if you're going to buy NFT or sell royalties, you're going to be able to do it. If you're going to buy peer-to-peer, but if you're going to buy a marketplace, Yaw, OpenSea, or Magic Eden, you're going to be able to do it. It's a flag. It's a flag, and you're going to be able to use it um par de que me ambos vão vender NFT que tu vai, mas eu não posso usar um par de perks não que tem usando NFT. With regards to Aku, we are mostly on OpenSea, and I don't think OpenSea has enforcement. Yeah, it's on ETH, but I feel like it's coming. I mean, there's always a danger when you're too dependent on marketplaces, but the same is with your crypto. You know, I know a lot of people that say they're in crypto, but as the saying goes, not your keys, not your crypto. Yeah. You know, if if you know, as he said, like. It's it's the uh, it's the danger when when marketplaces get too much uh, too much power, and we have to like break that up, and hopefully new m other marketplaces will compete those out of business. But it's a very heavy bear market, and and they're just trying to do what they can to uh, like get back to the good old uh, golden days, I guess. Thank you. All right. Did you want to add? Yes. Uh, I was just I was just gonna say that I mean it's like as I th I think it's the same thing you're saying that. Eventually, if there's the critical mass of creators who get to choose, and there has to be choice, obviously. But you know, there's an estimated one billion people will self-identify as creators over the next five years, and I do think that that's a powerful critical mass to be able to choose and sort of push the barriers forward to how the marketplaces act. So hopefully, that's sort of a, you know, that. But that's that's just the ideal. But I do think that that's possible. I also have one thing to add. It's a very contrarian opinion here. Um, there's also some good things about this um, whole concept of removing royalties. I, I know we have a lot of creators here, so it, it, I don't, I don't want to say it um, so bluntly, but 
Um, one of the biggest problems with NFTs, in my opinion, is the part that the non-fungible part of it, in the sense that if you want to sell it, you need to find a buyer. The same as you want to sell a car, you have to find someone that wants to buy that specific car. So when you introduce these royalties into the system, you kind of to make this automated market making position where you can actually like create kind of like liquidity for these things where people can just sell in and out really easily, royalties make it very difficult. So when you remove these royalties, you can create much better liquidity positions for these NFTs to be able to buy in and sell out much easier, which makes the whole market way more liquid, which makes it much better for any creator and on the longer run. The problem, of course, is that royalties pay well. So um, there's different ways of seeing it. That's basically my point. I love royalties, by the way, just saying. <laughs> um, so next question, is there any, I saw like a few hands. Uh, Bonocci, um, I wanted to ask uh, Cutie a question um, due to being part of uh, living on Curacao, um, going into the NFT business, was it easy due to um, paying off? Did, did it pay off that you just went in it to, for the creativity or the, 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 the funds of it? And uh, do you know more people around the island that are looking into the NFT business? Are they um, interested as much as you are? Um, and also, um, I don't know this guy's name, but I want to know Dirk. what. Yeah. Yeah. What what do you do? I don't. I came late, so I just. I saw, have you I, have you checked the NFT area? Yeah. There's this one art piece from Dirk with like a few, but with like the head helmet on. He basically created those in the, in the corner. Like you just walk in. Like I think it's the uh, vertical screens. So you check okay. the vertical screens. But you'll you, see it later. He makes NFT. Yeah. yeah ah, okay. Of All well, of I guess, you. I guess it's good to start with um, Cutie. I think your story is quite interesting too. So maybe just give us a quick rundown of. Yeah. Um. Now basically, ma kumi sa eigenlijk januari ding is solana blockchain, ma wak NFT ng riba Twitter, and ma wak um specific kuma ergusta e yama cats on crack. Na nota riba crack di droga. Afsi, pero pero ma gusta e art. So ora ma wak e ma Mira ku de mercado ou pienta usa marketing, pero ando usa com potret. Dus me di, dor ku mita un filmmaker, mita editor, me di, what about me animate, me NFT ku ma kumbra? Anto, ma animate, ora ma animate, me sora ma ya, e founder di Cats on Crack, apuntra me ori, patra marketing official di nang, di nang projects nang. Dus, ta kou enkele Twitter, kou riba Twitter, a sina na pidimi, ora e apidimi, Eri maya tripping ape epidemi matra algun kos pa digo am no digo youths this at the end Twitter ta ita tu mundo abri this technology ako tu mundo ako big tip here if anyone is interested in getting getting into NFTs crypto download Twitter follow QD follow me follow Dirk and follow everyone that we follow like. Basically, there's there's so much information that you learn from just scrolling to Twitter if you use it yeah. properly. If you source the right accounts, there is so much you can learn by just scrolling 10 minutes a day. So instead of scrolling on Instagram, download Twitter, follow some people here, follow some more people, search for whatever you're interested in. If it's crypto, DeFi, um, NFTs, search top 10 of DeFi, top 10 of NFT, top 10 of whatever else it is in that space, and just follow whoever they follow. Trust me, you'll learn so much so quick. And the only thing I'm going to give you is that a cat on crack will make you buy, make you buy for two hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. Me, I'm tipo un trabo. Si. Bo me stera kumpre pa bo po. Si, ma kumpre pa me. Si ma kumpa quarter. Karbo nota tu NFT romanang. De un si mang un di nanta bal of un tour da bal diez mil dollars kado. Dus mi di wara. De mi boxer tu na make make ki. Matrasen gemeng. Like no see trust, nigga. There's not a tour. Discretion. Not a tour. Not a tour. Pero ito mo sarabo kung un potret, ki man, tunay na tabi sarabo, ay no, ito safe ko eh. Pero e potret, ito bin kung full ng community. Ito yung 20 mil, 30 mil, ito kung stimele. Doon ko e supply ito chiquito, ito yung un kandidat, turo yun na kere. Sito po nagka-price ito ba alto. Doon, 
Então, eu disse um pouco de verdade, mas é um lifestyle. Então, tem um pouco de subir e para ter seu lugar na mesa, ou não para o papel que eu tenho, dentro do Discord. Então, é full um community, eu disse about the bank compra pictures, bank compra NFT, mas é também um, sim, um community, que eu tenho que dar, para um do outro. Awesome. I have a feeling you've said something that I was going to say, but just in case it's um, relevant, I think that obviously being on Twitter and I think getting into as many group chats and as many communities as you can, we have several in the Caribbean with English speaking Caribbean, obviously, but of course, very welcoming to we have some Curacao artists in the group chat that we have called Caribbean NFT, and it really is the best way to learn. Like when we started off with Wildflower, we knew nothing. And it was a, just a huge deep dive, a lot of question asking, a lot of vulnerability, <laughs> a lot of feeling like a child, like, you know, and not being afraid of asking and not of being afraid of, of failing. Um, the first NFTs we sold it, um, minted didn't sell for a long time until we just started iterating and changing the methods and changing the way, changing the price. <laughs> that had a lot to do with it. Um, but yes, the group chats are hugely helpful. So we have one that is called Island in that's a, a range of Caribbean artists that you're very welcome to join. On which um, platform? It, it's, uh, it, well, I'm embarrassed. We're in the Web 2 meets Web 3 space still. We're in WhatsApp because of how many people use WhatsApp in the Caribbean versus Telegram or other chats. But um, you're very welcome to join. And I think that's one of the best ways to just jump in, ask questions, and learn from everybody else. Thank you. And Would also you? a question, um, is it very hard for the creatives to um, look at statistics when you're putting your art out there, or does it's, it's not that important in terms of selling, in terms of am I making this, will it sell, will it make? I mean, it really depends on what kind of thing you're going to do. With the Aku project, we're looking at creating series and maybe a movie. Then it's very important to test your what, what your audience likes. Yeah. Disney does the same thing, Pixar does the same thing. They have the audience and they test how characters are liked, how storylines are liked. But for individual artists, I think there's a big danger. If you put your work, I've seen it happen many times, you put your work on Twitter, something really works, and then people are like, that's what I'm going to do. And then it progresses, and very soon you fall out of love with the thing you were doing, and you're just making something for somebody else. Staying true to being authentic and staying true to the thing that you really love is the, the long game, and I, I think for, for it's At a least safe, for personal safe art. game. What? It's the safe game. Yeah. Trusting I mean, your own creativity. I mean, it's it's the difference between uh, being part of a, a larger commercial project like Aku or doing your 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 personal art. Um, I think. Awesome. I like these answers and I like the questions. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Go ahead, please. I think we're way over time, by the way. But I, I mean. <laughs> I do want to remind everyone that we're going to have a bit of a happy hour after party right after this. It's going to start at 10.30. We have Tierra Cora, which came all the way from Madrid to play for us for one hour. Um, so please do go there, enjoy, have some drinks. Don't leave immediately. Chill. This, let's go. Um, so we talked about the positive side of NFTs. And um, I wanted to know more about... Um, also the negative side, because you guys also talked um, how they exploited with a peer-to-peer. -peer. Is there any way uh, else people could exploit NFTs in a malicious way and use them for what it's not intended? I think, I, go ahead, yeah. I mean, one of the easiest ways is like these um, phishing websites, right? So you go to um, mint an NFT, you think you're minting an NFT, but then let's say it's Colectivofestival.com, that's an NFT website, but they make it Colectivo Festival with two A's. And you don't pay attention to that. And the moment that you press mint, the thing is, the moment that you press mint, you're actually pressing a smart contract. You're executing a smart contract. You're basically pressing, I want to transfer my money to this account to receive XYZ. But as retail and a lot of people that are not very well averse, you don't know what that smart contract has on the back end, and most people don't even research it. So what happens is that then this same button that says mint could also just be a button that says mint, but the execution contract on the back says transfer all money to my account. So these are very malicious ways that 
honestly, I've fallen for it once. So um, that's why I'm telling you. Yeah, it was a hurtful situation. I lost some money there, but it's all good. <laughs> we all did. We all did. So, so uh, that's there, one. But Mihai, you go so ahead. there, there are two questions there, right? One's the bad side, and then malicious ways. I want to address the first the emission of the NFTs. Um, as Project Arc, we were doing NFTs for conservation, for natural resources, climate change stuff, and we started on Ethereum. But we very um, um, early on realized that that's not going to happen, especially that we were collaborating with WWF uh, on a project in Romania with uh, uh, the renovation arm. And we had to switch really fast to Polygon because it was the lesser um, uh, evil, so to speak. Uh, so the, the, um, um, this narrative of uh, NFTs ruining the environment kept perpetrating itself even after um, Ethereum emerged to a proof of stake, which uses significantly lower resources, people still think, oh, it's something there that it's not good. Um, and the second case is um, if you want to attract new people, because I think um, uh, one of the speakers, Pat, was saying that there are just 2.5 million wallets um, in the ecosystem, active wallets, right? It means that just only 2.5 million people are using you, um, a blockchain at the moment, including NFTs. Um, if you want to have more people joining in, it has to be a safe space. And the NFT space, it's not safe at all. It's Wild the, West. Yeah, exactly. It's the two kinds of people, people that have fallen into a trap and lost something, and people that will do so. There's, you, you can't be in the NFT for a while and not lose something or be scammed. Or, um, the, the, the problem is that if a big case happens or somebody famous just puts out that I've been scammed of NFTs, it will deter other people to join in. So uh, not being regulated, which for some it's a good way, uh, but at the same time, if you have, uh, let's say, um, um, some laws that um, say that in, in case you've got um, scammed, you can take your money back or that company can fall, um, that's uh, uh, you know, um, a much safer way for people to get in and trust the technology. But because it's wild, wild west, it's uh, much harder to do so. Awesome. Yeah. All right. God bless. Amazon NFT ledger. ledger um, a chance to hop it chiquito, or to click, riba un 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 site kuta fake of poke algo, but a pair of NFT. But misli ke chiquito ledger ta un bo wallet, eta demo mang eta un hardware wallet, eta un cold wallet. De si bo no asi si bo no accepta a transaction riba a wallet ei, bo no de pair bo NFT. Correcto. Si bo accept this, si bo accept this. Si bo accept this. Pero pero bo accept this bo da lesa. Um, como te viste um brother de mim com a trinta NFT? Não prime um link. Yeah. Não prime nada que eu vou mirar. Para ali, essa promete um tempo. Não corre prime ali para o website. Promete que está bom. Então, o que eu também vi é que o problema com a NFT tá, não tem um ano para roubar esse caché. De verdade, vou roubar a polícia. Mas arriba a NFT não tem um ano. Então, eu vou perder. Se tu entra, eu vou subir. E agora, 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 eu vou subir. Não cumpre a NFT. Não cumpre a NFT. Um, tem já projetos que estão subindo royalties de NFT, não é um por cento, se que é um corte, ele vai vender e não tem nenhum cento. Então, se você tem um projeto que quer fazer, não vai correr para esse que você tem, e não tem NFT. Então, se você subir royalties, e se depois você tem um corte, não é atrativo para vender, então, talvez, esse projeto não vai comprar, então, não vai vir para você. Tem certo que eu não posso ajudar com ele, mas o que é mais importante é que tem um hardware wallet, se dá um, então não clique para o louco, ou nada que eu vou mirar. Big, big tip on clicking links, because I've been through it. <laughs> If you want to click any link, go on the official Twitter page of the project. And go on their link and click that link. Don't go search on Google, 
Don't go find someone else's link that someone sent you. Go on their official page. As every project has an official Twitter page. You click on the link because they all have their link right there. Pero ni ko ni Twitter ay hello. Twitter tama mo apply mo ba? The squad blue mo ba? Last ultimo na hayak e Twitter di e NFT and do post the link. Correct. Na post the link. Tu rende a premium and do tu rende pare na pare mas ku dos million na NFT isku ganay. But by the way, that happened with Discord too. Se, tambe. Dus, ami te kere, wa ami sember, wa ami sember no te klik e prome 30 um um hora. Mi te wara tu rende kai pasade nang ko. Lagan ni ko klik, lagan ni ko klik. Se, eri mi te klik. Ora tu rende kai pasade nang ko pare na NFT, mi te, mi te be klik no. All right, guys. I think, I think we have reached the end of this panel. It's much longer than we expected, but I. Truly enjoyed um, com having a conversation with all of you. Thank you for being so present and helping us out. And thank you for the crowd too. Um, as I said, I think this is the end of this stage. We're closing off this stage now. Please feel free to pass over to the main stage. And um, thank you for coming and thank you for leaving. Dance floor, let's go.